I will start by drawing symbols. First a switch. Then a terminal strip. And a motor. I will rename the switch to, let's say, K1. Now I'll draw the wires. I set up the two color wires using the style library. I'll remove the labels at the terminal strip because they are not needed. And now I'll draw the cables using the Insert Cable menu. I can mark the individual conductors of the cable. I will name them, for example, A, B, C, D, and determine whether these labels should be visible in the drawing. I use this button to turn visibility on for all labels at once. I'll clone the whole connection to make the drawing more interesting. Now let's take a look at the list of cables. It should contain four cables. Each cable has a name, a type that I can change here, a length that I can write here if I know it, where the cable is coming from, in the format of a symbol, colon, connection points. Then there is the marking of the conductors, the marking of the connections, and where the cable leads. If I check the Expand Rows checkbox, each core of the cable will appear on one line. If a column is not needed, I can press the Columns button and I can delete it there. For example, if I didn't want the length, I would delete it here, and the length would disappear. We can also look at the list of terminals. There are eight terminals in the drawing and eight lines in the list. Each line corresponds to one terminal. In the middle is the terminal designation, and on the sides it says where the terminal is connected to from each side. If the list of terminals does not work as intended in your drawing, check the Terminal Strip setting. Right-click on the terminal and select Connection Points. Each terminal should have two connection points, one input and one output. The Properties panel should indicate that it is a terminal.